I asked a question that it has been really on my mind for for some time in a in a recent episode on on In Search of Wisdom with with Kevin Griffin. He's a long time Buddhist meditation teacher and and things like that. And I we were discussing this idea in, in Buddhism. Most times, maybe people that aren't super, super familiar are thinking Buddhism, meditation, but they have what's often referred to as these wisdom tools, and there's three where it's reading and listening. There's these things in Buddhism of Dharma talks, and then there's the idea of contemplation and meditation as as three different things. And I was chatting with him about it of, you know, what is the difference between meditation and contemplation and to that if he has any concerns around you know just somebody jumping on a particular meditation app and just doing one of these three things you know just meditation um and basically like i don't hear a lot about contemplation you know like how do you differentiate that it seems to be you know important how do we in your view, practice contemplation, which is what Marcus Aurelius is doing there to, to actually do a a deep reflection without being lost in thought, if if you will. I haven't thought a lot about that word contemplation, but just as you're presenting it to me now, that it's kind of that part of holding it in your mind, right? You're thinking on it very focused, right? Very much that focused attention idea. And then I would think to contrast that with then meditation, Especially when I think of Buddhist meditation, it's much more that process. You're trying to be a little more non-attached, right? A thought comes, you let it go. Another thought comes, you notice it, you let it go again. That what I think why it's useful, and this is just coming to me as we're talking, right? But why it's useful to separate those. At first, I would say there's not much harm to just meditate, right? What's the harm if you skip those first two steps, just jump right to meditation. But it is a thing I've observed, at least occasionally, or more than occasionally, people who use meditation to just check out, to just disconnect. And they're not, they're not staying present, right? They're not staying open to whatever they feel in their body, whatever thoughts pass through. It's just, it's relaxing and it's nice because I completely checked out for, you know, 10 or 20 minutes. It might be relaxing, but it maybe doesn't build that ability to constantly notice the judgment, let it go. Notice the judgment again, let it go. Um, that maybe is a consequence of people that learning meditation without particular, like, instruction on what it could be yeah yeah and it seems to be like there's a need for many different things many different tools yeah. you know if if you will uh, i think of a couple passages in meditations of marcus aurelius is doing this deep reflection on change where in one of these passages you know he writes nine or ten questions in a row to himself around the nature of change. And then there's another one where he's wrestling with this idea of, should you get out of bed? Yeah, that's a famous one, right? Yeah, yeah, maybe this trivial thing, but you know, the way that he is wrestling with this particular example, you, I, I think he's assuming that you can apply this to many different aspects of life. You could essentially yeah. plug in anything. Yeah. And, you know, wrestling, and it seems like, you know, that is needed. And it connects with, for me, what we were talking about earlier of clarity. You know, it's like the present moment, clarity, being in the present moment, but also there's a need for clarity around, you know, what's important? Why does this matter? Like Marcus Aurelius, he needs this deep understanding of change, of how the world works, in the way of the bed example of duty and obligation, right. he's contemplating it. He has this clarity, and it seems like we need that to really be in the in the present moment. Yeah. Um, but I don't know. There's it gets fuzzy in terms of why that's important and how we do such a thing. I think that's from the the Stoic perspective, right? Is that there's a room for judgment. And I think that's the thing that's got to be used carefully because judgment can so easily turn into shame and uh, especially shame. Maybe guilt is healthy, but shame is much more often unhelpful that um, it's not that everything is non-judgment, right? But for the Stoics, it's 
his choice, right? So he's looking at himself like, what's wrong with you? Why can't you get out of bed? He really needs an answer to that, right? And he needs you to try better next time, right? And that's something very useful about it, right? And he's, yeah, trying to really, really look at himself, right? Really, why is it, right? What is it yeah, that, that makes it so hard um, to do that? Yeah. 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 Why are we doing such a thing? Why pick up a book? Why, why go to work? It seems there, there, there needs to be some clarity there, some contemplation of what matters. This, this yeah. newsletter and, and podcast perennial meditations is about that. These perennial questions that people have been contemplating since the start of time, you can't necessarily just go off their their contemplations, their wrestling with these perennial questions. It seems to be that you have to do that particular work, that contemplation on your own. In that conversation with Kevin Griffin, he was essentially saying that in definitely in, in the Western world here of that starting with meditation is people need a, a basic foundation of meditation or mindfulness to be yeah. able to, you know, to do contemplation, this, this deep reflection without, you know, being lost in lost in thought. I think especially in our modern world, yeah, it's so easy to always be not present and be in the future or the past. I, I wonder when we had this conversation come up in one of the walled garden meetups uh, about, you know, people wanted to know what specifically were their practices, right? And that one of my thoughts is just, you know, in the world they lived in, there was probably a lot more being present, right? Just getting yourself fed. You got to be very present and mindful of how am I going to eat today, right? And and exercise, whether it's working hard for, yeah, like um, agriculture or, you know, being an emperor, leading an army, warriors, right? They're, they're present in the moment, right? They, they got to worry about a lot of things right in that moment. So it's, I think that's things, yeah, that we figure out, you know, like for Brandon Tumblin, right? The, the, the strength training, right? That exercise, is that a thing that keeps you present, right? Um, yeah, the Stoics didn't think about it as a thing they needed to write down and explain it to you. It's like being a fish in water, right? They didn't see it any other way. There's things they were doing. They couldn't imagine us as modern people not doing those things. Um, so it is interesting to try to recreate what that might have been. Yeah. yeah, and it seems like a better understanding of maybe what contemplation is and the value of contemplation. You think about Aristotle writing about contemplation being the highest form of activity that we could possibly do.